Hi again. I'm back with more chapters from Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Um, the last few chapters that we've been reading along, some of you may have been doodling or writing different unexpected and expected things that you're seeing happening in the book. So remember, you can jot down some ideas of things that you think are very unexpected to be happening in a school, and then you can write what would be expected instead. You can send them to me in pictures or you can email me and I'll be excited to see what you have to say. So we are on chapter four. And chapter four is called Sherry. And there's the picture of Sherry. Sherry had long eyelashes. She always wore a big red and blue overcoat with a hood. The overcoat weighed 35 pounds, the red part weighed 15 pounds, the blue part weighed 15 pounds, and the hood weighed 5 pounds. Her eyelashes weighed a pound and a half. She sat next to the window in Mrs. Jewell's class. She spent a lot of time just staring out the window. Mrs. Jules didn't mind. Mrs. Jules said that a lot of people learn best when they stare out a window. Sherry often fell asleep in class. Mrs. Jules didn't mind that either. She said that a lot of people do their best learning when they are asleep. Sherry spent all of her time either looking out the window or sleeping. Mrs. Jules thought she was the best student in the class. One afternoon, it was very hot. All the windows were open, yet Sherry still wore her red and blue overcoat. The heat made her very tired. Mrs. Jules was teaching arithmetic. Sherry pulled the hood up over her face, buried herself in the coat, and went to sleep. Mrs. Jules, said Kathy, Sherry is asleep. That's good, said Mrs. Jules. She must be learning something. Mrs. Jules continued with the lesson. Sherry began to snore. Mrs. Jules, Sherry is snoring, said Kathy. Yes, I can hear her, said Mrs. Jules. She must be learning an awful lot today. I wish the rest of you could be like her. Sherry began to toss and turn. She flopped over on top of her desk and then she rolled on top of Kathy's desk. Then she rolled back the other way. Kathy screamed. Sherry rolled out the window. She was still sound asleep. As you know, Mrs. Jules's class was on the 30th story of Wayside School. So Sherry had a long way to go. After she had fallen 10 stories, Sherry woke up. She looked around. She was confused. She wasn't in Mrs. Jules's class and she wasn't at home in bed. She couldn't figure out where she was. She yawned, pulled her hood back over her eyes, and went back to sleep. By that time, she had fallen another 10 stories. Wayside School had an exceptionally large playground. Louis, the yard teacher, was way over on the other side of it when he happened to see Sherry fall out the window. He ducked under the volleyball net, hurtled past the kickball field, hopped over the hopscotch court, climbed through the monkey bars, sped across the grass, and caught Sherry just before she hit the ground. The people in Mrs. Jules' class cheered. Sherry woke up in Louie's arms. Darn it, Louie, she said. What did you go and wake me up for? I'm sorry, Sherry, said Louie. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sherry repeated. Is that all you can say? I was having a wonderful dream until you woke me up. You're always bothering me, Louie. I can't stand it. She laughed and hugged him around the neck. Louis carried her back up the 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jules's room. That evening, when Sherry went to bed, she was unable to fall asleep. She just wasn't tired. The end.